Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Ritual Beast deck yet again, using its, you know, went or some new support in the form of Winda. Uh, this is a deck that is always really popular on my channel and other people's channels as well. This is just one of those decks that people just really enjoy seeing played, uh, as far as its technical and all that sort of nonsense. Uh, now, the biggest problem the deck has is bricking. Uh, and not being able to start plays, but that is what you see in the build that's currently on screen, is that I'm trying to play cards like Brilliant Fusion to sort of alleviate that a uh, fair bit. Uh, the thing with Brilliant Fusion is that it is basically an additional starter card because you can make Gym Knight Prismora, and you can do that by sending Garnet plus Conahawk to Grave, and then if you have Laura, either of these Zephyr Pilicas or Oracle of Zephyr plus any of these terraformings, that's literally like seven cards that can go with either the Foolish or the Brilliant Fusions, to allow you to just go ahead and start at least getting a search off Conahawk. That's the, that's the big thing. You're just trying to get a search. You're trying to do things in a manner that allows you to get at least one key search to protect you, like Steeds or Ambush or something, right? Uh, but so what you have is you have all this stuff uh, kind of just characterizing the deck as just trying to fill it with starter cards uh, and then you have your searchable traps. The only traps that are not searchable are very, very big blowout traps in the form of Barrier and uh, Macro Cosmos, stuff like that. Now, there's also the Brain Research Lab to be an additional field spell, which is also a starter card, which is, you know, essentially four copies of it because you've got Terraformings plus the Brain Research Lab and what that allows you to have is that allows you to have opening hands that are not elders but has like a beast plus winda or winda plus tamer or beast plus tamer uh like it just it allows you to stack things up in the way you want and with the terraformings you could also terraform it for oracle of zephyr if you open double terraforming you can terraform it for oracle of zephyr get zephyr and pilica then terraform it for brain research lab play that and then normal summon the zephyr and pilica in addition to your normal summoner set of whatever beast that you are going to be summoning so Overall, there's just a lot of overlap. You're just trying to get the starter cards. That's the name of the game with this deck. is starter cards, starter cards, starter cards. Now, this deck is probably worse off than it has ever been uh, because of the fact that the, the format's really, like, hostile. Uh, and it's it's constantly going to be hostile uh, as far as decks being able to go second because of the fact that Dimensional Barrier and Solemn Strike both eat Ulti Conahawk for breakfast. Like, <laughs> it's just... You have one Ulti Conahawk and you're just going to get, like, Dimensional Barriered before you even fuse or you're going to get striked when it's summoned and that's just it's gonna be a bad time uh, there's literally only like one way in the deck to play around strike and that's with Oracle of Zephyr if you're fusing with Zephyr and Pilica into the Conahawk um, and that like that doesn't even like really play around strike uh, it just like makes it a little bit easier for you to deal with getting striked but you're still losing your Conahawk Regardless, this is always a popular deck, and people always like to see people play it, including myself, and so I felt like playing it again uh, and seeing what we could get out of it. But anyway, enough rambling on, enough doing what I usually do. Let's just jump straight into the game and uh, see how the deck operates, shall we? Alright, so let's see how this goes. Although, I literally just lost Rock, Paper, Scissors, so this is probably not going to go well in any way, shape, or form. Although, I do have hand traps in this deck, so I mean, I guess I could draw those. Well, hand trap. A singular, <laughs> one singular, oh shit, he's let me go first, oh, Long Johnson, Long Johnson, alright, uh, I can use Oracle of Zephyr just to thin my deck here, I can normal summon the Winda, I can set Ambush and Steeds um, with Dimensional Fissure, I wonder if Dimensional Fissure just shuts down his entire deck. That's what I'm curious about. But this is really strong, and so I'm going to set all of these cards and activate this, because if this dies, it floats into a, a Ritual Beast from my deck, probably Conahawk. And then if that Conahawk dies, Ambush is live. So that's what we're going to mess with. But uh, it won't be live until my draw phase, uh, because the Conahawk will have been special summoned. So, ah, <laughs> Infernoids. Oh, shit. Oh my fucking god, we're gonna steeds this. So I let <laughs> Dimensional <laughs> Dimensional Fissure banish three Infernoids. He banished a Decatron. That means he, that, those must be like his only Infernoid cards. Lone Fire Blossom? What the fuck? What is happening in Yu Gi Oh! land today? Predaplants. Alright. Is he playing like the new zoo combo with like Predaplants and stuff? 
in this deck he is! Okay. Alright, so even though that Deviate literally was the most resource intensive thing in the world, just to get completely banished, it's still going to yield him a possible draw 5. Yeah, this should be just a draw 5, because he summons any zoo out of his deck that's not Rapier. Um, and then he just puts Tiger Mortar on it, detaches, gets Rapier back, uh, and then detaches, and then he's got Instant Fusion, which is a, another 2 level 4s. Uh, which is what you need to give you five draws off of a fusion substitute, and uh, two fusion substitutes, and three emeralds. Uh, that's exactly what you need. Now, whether or not he goes that far, um, I'm curious to see. He might actually just stop somewhere along the line at, like, a Kagetsuchi or something, because he's playing a mill deck. Um, so that could be the case. Uh, this was not correct. Okay, so he, no he does not have the draw five combo at all. Uh, because he might just not play the other zoo cards, the other zoo names, but if you're playing a deck like this, you definitely need to be playing at least one copy of Whiptail. Probably two. Uh, just because even Whiptail by itself is just a way to go into Dryden. So, like, there's not really much that he has access into what he's able to do. If he's summoning Mulmorat from his deck, or excuse me, Ratpier. If he's summoning Ratpier from his deck and then off the off the Invoker and then also Instant Fusion Nordening back the Ratpier immediately then that's just not good for your combo sequencing. That's that's just the problem here. Uh, like, it's just not good for your combo sequencing. Like, he gets to make an, a Minerva here. That's pretty cool. Um, he's definitely going to be able to get... Okay, he, he plays Whiptail. Okay. Well, this play string was just all sorts of wrong then. Because if he plays the Fusion Sub combo, which I'd assume he would, um, like, playing the Scorpio and stuff like that is very, like, indicative of, like, playing really heavy combo-oriented, um, like, uh, Zoo Beasts. But so, I'm really curious because like you, the the better play there, or at least better card economy wise, even without the fusion substitute involved, was to invoke her into your whip tail, put the tiger mortar on top of the whip tail, detach the rat, uh, detach the whip tail, re-equip rat, then detach rat to uh, to summon rat from deck, and then put bullhorn on top and get a search for something, and then like you're able to do stuff there. I'm and then you've got the instant fusion that you can use to go Norden into Whiptail. I'm confused. I guess I'm I'm almost positive at this point that he probably just doesn't play the um, the Zodiac Beast um, or the Lunalite combo because there's literally no reason for him to have done this play if he doesn't. Uh, but the problem is that I'm still just going to lose my shit. Um, but so what I've got to do here is he's got a Dryden with like how many materials under it? At least two. Um, he's just attacked over the window with what? I took 200 and window is 16, so he attacked with the Emerald. Um, mm. So he can attack with Invoker. And this doesn't have anything on He has a Whip Tail in his hand that I need to respect. Uh, we'll just get Conahawk. We'll just get Conahawk. Uh, we'll put it in attack mode, uh, that way maybe he's incentivized to try and do more damage. Um, I know he has Whiptail in hand, so that's definitely something I need to respect. Uh, but this Dryden is going to be a bit of a fucking problem. Damn, man. <laughs> Take a minus four into a Deviate uh, just to out my uh, dimensional fissure. And then I just get destroyed. I just get shat upon. Uh, okay. So yeah, Dryden doing this damage that's dead I can Oracle of Zephyra <sighs> fuck me this Oracle of Zephyra is not resolving I don't expect it to resolve at all come on come on damn it <laughs> this is where this is where the problem lies is that I just wasn't expecting a Deviate that's that's the thing I was not expecting a Deviate at all uh, yeah, so see, that doesn't resolve. I'm going to set this, and then I'm just going to literally just die. <laughs> there's there's nothing more about it that can be done. Uh, it's just set card, die. Um, well, this was a bit... This was a bit anticlimactic. Well, I don't even know about that. That was a saucy Deviate, but still... Like, I, that was the last card I was expecting, to just pop out of nowhere. Um, if I was expecting something like a Deviate, then I would not have set this ambush with it not being live immediately. <laughs> Um, because, like, it would have been live the next turn, but then I also had Oracle of Zephyra, which could have gotten a, uh, a Zephyr Pilica, which could have revived, um, like, something, or just been a, just been a thing. 
Uh, so like having the knowledge of that sort of stuff ahead of time would have definitely changed my plays, or at least having a like little bit of a knowledge of what deck he was playing, uh, knowing that it was an Infernoid variant, or not knowing that it was an Infernoid variant, basically uh, led me to basically walk straight into a trap uh, of the Deviate. At least I was able to clear the Deviate with the Steeds, but still. And, and, like, the Windows effect to float wasn't that optimal because I could have, like, floated into one of the big guys from the extra deck, but then it would have just killed, been killed by Dryden. Now, I could have floated into, uh, into the, uh, the one that, um, can't be, the Petalfin, the one that can't be destroyed by card effects, but Petalfin would have had to be in defense mode, and he would have just rammed Dryden into it and put Whiptail under it, and it would have banished the Petalfin. Uh, so, like, there was literally no way for me to play that any differently. Uh, like, as far as, like, what I did after the Deviate hit, there's literally no way I could have played that differently to change the outcome and change the result. So that's a bit disappointing. Uh, for a deck that I love as much as this deck, it's really disappointing um, that that's just the case. But, it's whatever. So we'll normal summon this. That's a Tiger Mortar. <laughs> what the fuck is this doing here? Um, there's a Tiger Mortar here. Uh, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to banish a, an ulti Apelio to send regular Apelio to grave. Right. Uh, this thing has got a whip tail under it. Got to respect that. But actually it doesn't really matter per se. Uh, this is fucking awful. Damn it, Rampangu. Why can't you have like a hundred more attack? That way I could have killed the Invoker. I can Steeds the Emerald and then you're forced to ram your Tigress into my thing. Damn it. <laughs> garbage <laughs> this is so garbage <laughs> this is so terrible this is not what I want in my life or in my Yu-Gi-Oh uh, not at all but so all right Scorpio coming down he could summon another Darling Cobra that's fine um, but he, Darling Cobra can only use its effect once per duel so uh, not gonna be anything that I need to worry about so that's fine he can make a Dante <laughs> wow! Wow! All right. Uh, so yeah, that's fine. In fact, I probably should have just steeds to that straight away, but now I'm gonna get punished for it. Uh, if he runs anything looking like BA cards, okay, good, <laughs> fucking good. All right, but I'm still gonna lose. I still just lose to this situation because I'm gonna just, I'm gonna have to steeds his. Uh, really? Um, okay. I'm still gonna lose. I have to Steeds the Dante, because it's the biggest one. But this is still just gonna suicide, and then this is gonna hit me for 3k even, of which I can only take the Emerald. <laughs> God damn it. What a random ass game. What a random ass game of fucking Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, I'm so actually just not happy about that. But it's also just fine. Uh, where's the shortcut for my opponent's graveyard? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I can't believe that Deviate just came out of literally nowhere to just rape my dreams and my hopes. That's absolutely... Duh, that's terrifying. I hate that. I hate Deviate as a card. I hate the fact that like cards like that exist that can just pop out of nowhere and just be like, Ha! Got you? But at the same time, they're really easy to counter uh, because it's a monster. and You can have things like Strike or whatever. But still, man. <laughs> absolutely ridiculous. But anyway... I guess that's going to be it for this video. I'll play another Ritual Beast video, uh, another Ritual Beast video game, whatever, yeah, that'll go up in the same day, uh, just to give this deck another chance, because I really love this deck. I love how Ritual Beast plays, but this this deck just, the problem is, when you brick, you brick, and this build is trying to minimize that to a degree, but at the same time, it just it doesn't really do it that well, but anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching, and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and check out the links in the description for my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to help support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely check out the details of that over on Patreon, as well as you could possibly get access into my Discord server and play me for videos and talk with me on a daily basis like iRadium here does, uh, and all that sort of stuff. All the people that I play in, the, my, in my most recent videos are all people that are populating my Discord server, and it's, uh, it's just one of the reward tiers if you're interested. But other than that, uh, my giveaways are usually a significant amount of Konami products, so if you're interested in that, then just go check out the Patreon page. Um, I'm not sure what this month's giveaway is going to be yet. It'll either be like a lot of the structure decks, 
or it'll be something else that I find uh, like suitable and fancy enough. But other than that, if you're looking to buy or sell cards while also indirectly supporting the channel, then be sure to check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and I'm a big fan of how they do business with what I've experienced thus far. So definitely check out their site and let them know that Phoenix sent you if you're looking to acquire any cards that you see me play in my videos and all that sort of nonsense. But other than that, that is it for this video. Again, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.